something. At any point, Steven Spielberg could have said, ah, you know what? It's a good take. You did this right, but let's try to do this with it and action. You know what I mean? And do it again. The the whole point of the kid is I, I came here mistakenly because dad said do this, and I'm going to listen to my dad and do it this way. And then it just becomes survival as well. It's, oh, I made a mess of this, and I shouldn't be here. So there's a little bit of guilt. And then when she finally sees an opportunity to be like, oh, here's something I know. Here's how I can help the situation. She knows gymnastics, and she's using her gymnastics to help the scene. Is it my favorite? No, not really. Does it come across as a little hokey? Maybe. Maybe some people would see it that way, but it's just a character using their strengths in a situation that they normally wouldn't. How would you react if you're in a in a, a land full of dinosaurs all of a sudden? Do you think you're going to have like the best performance out there? Absolutely not. Like, Mm-mm. it's I think just people sometimes need to be a little more realistic when it comes to certain things. And we love you, Jay Cluett. And I made fun of him, not made oh, fun totally. of him. I commented on it, and he went, uh, he's like, yeah, I was a lot more bitter five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't know. I just this movie. It, it's just a popcorn blockbuster film. But I think the problem is is that it was made by Spielberg. And right. When I watch the other Jurassic Parks chart park movies, I would rank the five as Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park Two. Oh, oh I like the other uh, Jurassic World, Jurassic Park Three, and then Dominion. No, what's the Fallen th- Kingdom? Fallen Kingdom. I would say those are my rankings. I would ag- I would agree with you. And I think if someone else directed, like Jurassic Park 3, no. Nah. But Jurassic Park 2, if someone else directed it and it wasn't Spielberg's name, I think people would have liked it more. But I think since Spielberg's Ooh. name is on it, people does – does that make sense? I think that's a fair assumption, especially when – like the third one, who did the third one? Joe Johnson did the third one, right? He did uh, Captain America, the first Avenger, Rocketeer, October Sky. So this is kind of a little out of his warehouse or wheelhouse, excuse <laughs> me. But he still did stuff like Jumanji, right? He did The Wolfman. Mm-hmm. So he's used to doing these kind of, I don't want to say creature features, but these films with these characters that are out of the ordinary, and he can kind of handle it. And I think it works for him. So if someone else who does a little more you know, of the, the action base and fighting off like animals and stuff like that. Like I, I wholeheartedly agree. I think it would have been better received. It's just, I'm trying not, I'm, I'm not trying to get too uh, negative here. Cause I mean, this movie still made bank. It made $74 mm-hmm. million dollars. It's opening mm-hmm. weekend. It had the, it had the high, it was the highest grossing weekend total on, up until from 97 to 01 when Harry Potter one defeated it. With 90 million. Really? Yeah. And then Spider-Man, of course, in 02, cleared 114. And then it became the number one. gracious. So it had the title for almost four years. So people loved loved this movie. And it's kind of wild, though, that it had quite a steep drop-off in the theater. So it opened at 74, then it went to 34, then 18, 12, 8, 4, 2. So it's really – it made really great money. Mm. But audiences – didn't come back to see it as much, but that's fair. I mean, you get movies like Titanic that people go back back to, and then you get movies like Jurassic Park that have legs. Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Those movies all have regs, legs because there's something really new and fresh, and you want to revisit these worlds time and time again. Mm. Spielberg already made uh, Jurassic Park, so I don't think people are going to have that magic again. And also, I just want to say, Con Air, Con Air defeated uh, the lost world and knocked it out of one it, in the third weekend con air was number one so nicholas cage on a plane defeated lost world that makes me happy well it was that hair he had that flowing mane of his you know yeah and the bunny put the bunny oh man steve what a crazy movie i yeah, love it how about it <laughs> yeah, i guess you know people didn't people i don't know people didn't come back to see it they didn't really go to it too much but there's still I, I don't know it still gave me something fun and also, too, like, I think you're right. Spielberg, after Schindler's List, took a couple years off, and then he came back, and he's like, I want to make a King Kong movie, so I'm going to bring the T-Rex to America. I'm going to have T-Rex eat David Kep, the screenwriter, and call him, call him and his character's name in this movie is Unlucky Bastard. I'm going to... Holy cow. I'm sorry to interrupt you, train of thought, dude. You just blew my mind out. <laughs> he made his version of King Kong. Yeah. Remember when he and, and like Godzilla? Remember when he 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 yell like he uh, like there's a wide shot of of the T Rex yeah, yeah. doing that. 
on set on the behind the scenes documentaries, Spielberg was just so happy. He was so happy to be making a King Kong movie, a mini Godzilla movie. Like he was, you could, he's just like, oh man, I'm making a mini Godzilla King Kong movie. Like this is my, wow. this is my scene. And I also learned that baby T-Rex, the noises come, are baby camels. I thought that was pretty interesting. But okay, yeah, he, I think he just wanted to have fun. He, he just wanted to put Vanessa Chester in a movie. He wanted to make a King Kong Godzilla type film. He wanted certain elements. He wanted two T-Rexes this time. And instead of building full bodies, they just put them on these gigantic rigs that could drive with them on them on tracks, which is pretty amazing. But they, I think he just, and like also too, I heard Peter Stormare was talking about this movie and he said that whenever uh, Pete Postawait was on camera, Spielberg would just be like, tell people stop and watch him act. Like one time he just grabbed Stormare and was like, watch this. So he just made everyone watch <laughs> Pete act. And as while I was watching this movie, I don't know. It just seemed like everyone was having fun. He seemed to really enjoy himself making this. And also, Jeff Goldblum six four, Vince Vaughn six five. How often do we get two tall people like that on camera together? It's very rare. Not a lot. It was kind of Not weird, wasn't it? It's weird to watch, isn't it? Well, until you mentioned something that didn't even dawn on me, because I guess everybody else has you know a, a good enough height on him. Mm -hmm. But. uh yeah, that's we don't get a lot of tall boys up together. <laughs> I know it's random, but I seeing them together, I'm like, it's too tall. That's two six foot plus people on screen together. Made me happy. Yeah, I know it's really random, but uh, it is. But it's it's fun to think about those things. The dead you know meat I mean? podcast like, call them sequoias. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean. I don't know. I guess for me, this movie is more about moments. There's no wonder there. There's no, uh, and I think Spielberg realized that there's no wonder to this movie. There's no, there's no really no emotion either. There's no Alan Grant sleeping with the kids in the tree. There's really no humor either in this movie. No one gets snotted on by a brontosaurus. This is just well, a lean and mean creature feature. There, there are weird moments of humor. Yeah, triple um, cheeseburger. Yeah, you you have these weird edits and cuts and and things that the dinosaurs do in the very beginning when the mother screams, as she screams it immediately cuts to Ian Malcolm yawning yeah. as the train's coming through and you know I mean that whole bit you have him on the train with the random guy talking about like I know you and I believed you and you know all, right, all oh, that I other hate stuff. that guy. Can we talk about him for a second? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm I I I don't. Okay, I don't normally dislike many performances or people, but that guy and his gum smacking and just uh, the way he flicks his wrist away, he just overacts. I don't even think it's creating a dislikable character. I just don't like that human. I'm sorry, but just watching him like, I knew you, and he's smacking his gum and overacting and looking away and flicking his wrist. Like, how did Spielberg allow that, Nick? I don't, I don't know. There's no need for him, right? There's nothing that the character brings to the table. It's not like – because there's plenty of people throughout the film that are like, oh, you're crazy for saying the things you said. It didn't really happen. I don't believe you. There's plenty of that already in the film, so we don't need another instance of someone being like, I can't believe you said those things. Like how could you? Like it, it's it's totally unnecessary. I guess it's Ross Partridge. I, I don't guess. It is. Ross Partridge played the role, and I guarantee you, man, that – they just went, hey, you, you're a day player, and he just made a meal. <laughs> He's like, man, Spielberg's not really paying attention. I'm going to I'm gonna get away with some things here. Spielberg's just happy to be on set making this, chilling. I'm going to overact. But I, I just, oh, man, I hate gum smacking in movies, Nick. I can't do it. And in general. Yeah. And then also, there's kind of, well, he spits in her hand, and then she's like, no, the gum. But yeah, the humor doesn't fit. It, it's fine. I still love this yeah. movie. And I think it goes by really quickly, but the humor is quite odd, right? And I interrupted you yeah. when you were talking about no, it. No, no, you're good. I just well, had to talk about you, you, guy. You actually make it work, though, where, where it's odd humor because there's a scene where Goldblum goes into a room. A dinosaur jumps through the window, so Goldblum exits out the door, so the dinosaur jumps back out the window. It's, <laughs> it's these weird, just odd, doesn't make sense, almost slapstick uh, type humor moments, and it's like, why Why is this here? And it kind of goes over your head because you're not even thinking about humor. You're just like, oh, no, he's fighting for his life against this dinosaur, and it, just, it, gets, it gets really weird sometimes. 
It's a, it's a odd. I love it though. I think Spielberg was just loose on this movie. <laughs> <laughs> and he absolutely was. But as loose as the dinosaurs, huh? Oh. oh. <laughs> Bazinga. <laughs> but yeah, it's... Uh, I don't know. I still like it. A, a guy gets smushed underneath a T-Rex foot. Yeah. And, and carried along like a piece of toilet paper after you leave a bathroom. It's so silly, right? It's, it is. Yeah. It, yeah. It, and it, like you said, it's odd. Like, it's really weird. And then there's just moments, like you said, where, like, characters just kind of disappear or things just don't follow through. Like, when the guy gets up after listening to his tunes, he doesn't think, oh, where's my friend? Or, hey, here's his bag. Where'd he go? <laughs> here's this into his jams. Yeah, I just like, yeah. I mean, if they were jock jams, he'd be way into it. I'd be dancing around. And oh, was just, hey, he said take five. I am taking a five. I'm a mad dog this five, dude. Dun, 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 dun. Everyone hears it. Like, turn it down. The dinosaurs are going to hear it. And you see the little campies like, yeah, I kind of like this. Or Dan jumping along to the music. He's just leading a band of compies with him. Like the Pied Piper. But, yeah. But instead, it's a little boom box. <laughs> oh, man. I'm sure those have been made. And add to them. Bum, 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 bum. And they're like, ah. So the compies are following them. You just – and I mean, listen. This is a movie where a 10-minute sequence is just given to killing off a character, Peter Stormare, very mm -hmm. slowly. It's – he has nothing to do with the plot. That scene has nothing to do with the movie at all. It's just Spielberg wanting to kill Peter Stormare because he wanted to. And I love that about it. And this is why I think I like it because it, it's – there are – I think Lost World is – I think, yes, it does feature a Megalodon eating a T-Rex and a raptor fight. There are some neat uh, Indominus Rex. There are some neat moments, but it just feels safe. It feels very safe. Jurassic Park 3 kind of feels the same way. But this one, there's so much weirdness to it that makes it stand out from its other big blockbuster peers. And that's why I admire it. Also, it's a lead role for Jeff Goldblum. I mean, this is one of his... I know he's been in Independence Day in a few movies, but this was his name. He's number one on the call sheet on this movie. And it's pretty cool that he's headlining this blockbuster. And I think he does it well too. Like, do you like his role in this? I very much enjoy his role in this. It's, it's, it still feels like Ian Malcolm. It still feels like a character he's playing at, at no point. Is it like, Oh, he's just Jeff Goldblum being Jeff Goldblum. I think a lot of his uh, scenes and films recently, I think a lot of people are just kind of tapping into that where it's like, oh, we'll just put him in there. Like his role is Grandmaster and Thor Ragnarok. He's he's leaning a little more into Goldblum, much like um, Christopher Walken would kind of lean into that Walken. You know what I mean? But I feel like having him back as Ian Malcolm kind of strengthens him a little bit, kind of adds like, hey, he's still a good actor. He could still do these characters. Like I'm interested to see what he does with Jurassic World. Uh, Dominion coming back as that character because I think it's something that's going to ground him a little bit. It's not just going to be, hey, let's get loosey goosey with this too. It's no, this is a person and this is how they would react in this situation. Yeah, he, he he's not just going to show up on set in a turtleneck, say a few lines, exactly. and walk off. <clears throat> exactly. And you're right, he is in a different mode here. I guess when I watch him in this movie, he is Ian Malcolm. That's a really great yeah. point too. You're not. I love him in Thor Ragnarok, but he's Jeff Goldblum. Exactly. He's having fun. He's over the top. And he's supposed to be with that mm -hmm. character. With Ian Malcolm, you're not going over the top. You're not losing. Sure, people have memed him laying on the table to death, and that has since become a thing post. But, you know, at the moment, it's like, no, this is just Ian Malcolm's character. He's this cool, calm, collected guy who's slowly kind of becoming a little unraveled by everything that he's had to deal with. By And this film constantly in fight and flight mode. There's not a moment where he kind of takes a five, you know, like it, it's just there's no real rest. There's even when they get back home to San Diego, it's like, well, not home, but back to San Diego in general. It's like, are we still got to ramp this up and, and handle this thing? Oh, I love it. That's a great point. And that scene's not really needed either. I do love when the baby T-Rex kills Arliss Howard, though, or Peter Ludlow. Wait, yeah, Peter Ludlow gets killed. Right? Yes. Yeah. Sorry, that took me a second. Yeah, because he's down there, and the, and the mom's kind of like, "Go ahead and eat him. Show me what you're made of." And the kids like, and the little baby T Rex is like, "Yeah, I'm gonna do it." <laughs> <laughs> and he just rips into him one. Oh, and he tries to run away, and the mom gets him. It's, yeah, it's a nice she's bonding. Like, no, moment. you don't. It is, isn't it? Like, don't, no, don't you do it. And then pushes him back. It's like, get him. And he's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna get him." 
It's the